Hello everybody, my name is John Anthony, I'm from India and with me is the eight times Salsa World Champion Oliver Pinara from Australia. This is an exclusive interview to know a lot more about the World Champion, uh, to know a little more about, uh, about his personal life and his dancing. So Oliver, tell us more about your uh, childhood, your uh, dancing, how did it all start and where are you from? I was born in Sydney, Australia um, with a Chilean uh, heritage. All my family is from Chile, from Viña del Mar. And uh, born in 1981, um, raised around a lot of music. My father's a musician. Not so much dancing, but certainly a lot of music. And um, it wasn't until I was about 10 years old, my mother wanted to do some dance classes with, my, with her husband, my father. And I was really bored, so I decided to go along with them. And that was the beginning of my salsa career. I didn't uh, know at the time, but um, I met my dance partner, Luda, um, when I was about 10. And it was just history in the making. Wow, you didn't know at that time you were going to become a world champion and no, you're going to inspire so many not of at us. All. Not at all. So that means you've been dancing for 25 long years. That's, that's correct, yes. Wow. 25 years, long time. I, I also, um, before I took dancing seriously, I used to do martial arts. Um, I was a black belt second dan in Taekwondo and I used to teach kids. And I also um, used to play soccer. I was very athletic, sports, swimming. I used to win all the carnivals, <laughs> wow. um, running, and uh, I was very athletic. So, um, but I, I never really thought dance was a, an option for me. I um, went to school, obviously, but I didn't finish, I didn't complete school. Uh, I was not really um, astute at, at school. Uh, studious. Yes, yeah. yes. I, I was not, um, you know, I didn't really like to study and sit down and stay still. I was always wanting to move. And so, um, you know, instead of sort of uh, trying to pin me down, my, my, my parents really supported. Wow. Uh, what I wanted to do and, 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 and allowed me to express my, my fidgetiness. <laughs> I'm sure they are proud today. Yeah, they are and um, you know, they, everything worked out for the, for the best. Uh, obviously, I've created something really good for myself and um, so when I was in year 11 at school, um, I got offered a scholarship uh, to dance in London and that meant that I couldn't complete my studies, my school. Um, so they sat me down, my parents sat me down with my principal at school and they asked him what he thought I should do. And my principal said that he felt that I should pursue my dancing. And so uh, I think, you know, thanks to him, <laughs> I. Uh, I was able to then um, go to London and, and study, and that was in ballroom dancing. Because okay. I, I... You my, first initially started with ballroom? No, I first started with salsa when I was about 10. And when I was about 13, I started ballroom. And that ballroom dancing I did for about seven years, simultaneously to when I was, what I, uh, when I was doing salsa. Um, but the ballroom dancing gave me the foundation, the, the technical grounding yeah, that I needed. needed. Um, salsa, when I was, you know, learning salsa, I was also learning lambada, I was learning samba, Brazilian samba, and I became part of a show, a big uh, Brazilian show at the time. I was only 13, but I started performing in this show with Luda, and we were like the special Special feature guests. act, yeah, yeah, because we were little kids and yeah. we came out in between all the girls with the G-strings, you know, <laughs> we little kids came out and did this little routine and, and everybody was like, oh my God, they're so cute. So that's, you know, that's, um, I, I guess, looking back, I, I got a lot of performance experience with the street Latin um, 
and then the ballroom gave me more of that structured foundation and I got a lot of competitive experience through the ballroom because um, I used to compete a lot. And I came to a point where I had to make a decision to stop martial arts because uh, I was um, getting bruised up, <laughs> uh, cut some bruises and uh, you know couldn't dance as well so um, gave that up and then again uh, made a decision to stop school and pursue my dancing and um, not long after I got that scholarship um, I also got another scholarship um, to do a bachelor's of dance a bachelor's degree of dance um, at the Australian College of Physical Education in Sydney. It was an honour, it was like a $13,000 scholarship. Um, not many people get this scholarship, so I got this scholarship, I went and I lasted one year <laughs> and then I couldn't, couldn't um, study, oh, <laughs> I, was, yeah. I couldn't sit down. And, so, um, you know, but uh, around the time that I stopped the scholarship, um, I, I met Natalie, um, Natalie Zeller, her name is. Uh, she was the woman who I started my business with. Um, I was 18 and she was uh, like 35. She was the brains of the business, I was the artist. We started Latin Motion Dance Academy and I've had my school for the last 15 oh, nice. years now. So who were your like teachers? Do you, like when you started dancing, you learn from somebody. You have some yeah. someone who inspired you. I mean, you. the very, 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 very beginning, I learned from a Brazilian, uh, two Brazilian guys, Marcos and Marconi. Nobody really knows who they are, but back in Sydney, they they have the biggest Brazilian shows. So uh, lambada, salsa, um, you know, um, samba, batucada, capoeira that's what they do <clears throat> and so they taught me my first basics um, <clears throat> but I can honestly say that I'm pretty much self-taught um, because although I've had inspiration from people nobody's really sat me down and said this is how you move your body this is you know Susie Q and, and yeah so uh, everything that I all my methodologies is pretty much just created on my own I've I started teaching when I was about 13 years old. So from the age of 13, I was teaching um, and just developing, not consciously, but just not knowingly, developing my, my methods. So from the first time that I have seen you, uh, you are like a completely changed man now and that I feel is because of a lot of impact of your family and mm. your child. So tell the viewers more about them. Yeah, I have a, a beautiful uh, wife and daughter. I can't forget the wife. <laughs> uh, so uh, her name is Anastasia and my daughter's name is Melody. I have her tattooed here. And um, <clears throat> she's uh, two years old now, two years and four months. And I guess as, as a parent, it changes you. It, it uh, definitely made me uh, take things more seriously. So tell us more about your wife, where do you meet her, where is she from? So my wife is from Greece, she's born in Athens, um, but she moved to Sydney when she was eight. Um, but she's still very patriotic. <laughs> <laughs> um, so about five years ago she came to a salsa class. I was teaching a beginner's salsa class at my school and she came with a group of girlfriends and the second that I saw her, it was, you know, instant attraction. She's a very beautiful woman. And um, we um, sort of got to know each other. Um, you know, we didn't get into a relationship straight away. It took about a year. Uh, she was in a relationship, I was in a relationship. So uh, within about three months of the relationship, I knew I was going to propose. Um, so I, yeah, I told her mother I was going to marry her daughter. <laughs> she didn't have a choice. Uh, um, and uh, yeah, and that's what I did. Took her to the Eiffel Tower and I proposed and we got married in Greece. Uh, we had Melody before we got married, so it was slightly out of sequence, but, <laughs> <laughs> but nonetheless, um, yeah. Very, very happy.
So more than like, you know, uh, many people know that you're a great dancer, but there are so many that they don't know that you're a great musician. You're also, you also pay, play an instrument. Can you tell people yeah. more about that? So being a percussionist, I play timbales, congas, uh, bongos, campana, wiro, maracas, uh, handheld instruments. Um, and I absolutely love playing. Uh, in fact, I, 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 it's a completely different feeling being on the dance floor to being on the other side, which is the music. Is it one of the reasons that you're so good musically when you're dancing? Uh, I, I have to say absolutely yeah, that the m musical knowledge and just the, the, the way that I'm hands-on with the music, um, you know, I'm, I'm in there, I, I, I'm playing and I play and that really helps my, my dancing, my, my social dancing, my musicality when I choreograph the way that I hear music. Um, so it's a combination of, of a lot of things that make me dance the way that I dance and the, the music is definitely one of them. And then there's the, the, the technicality behind my dancing, that's another. You and, travel like, you know, yeah. um, all over the world yeah. quite often. How do you cope up like, you know, with your family now and your school and you're also traveling? Yeah. How do you like manage? Well, I've designed my school to be able to run without me um, for short periods of time. Um, with my family, uh, at the moment, they're at home waiting for me. Um, you know, my, my wife is very understanding that I need to leave from time to time. But for the most part, I travel with her. So you have been twice now to India, once in 2012 and now. So what do you think about the Indian salsa scene, you know? I mean, mm. what do you feel about the dancers, uh, the organization? You want to say something to the people? No, I have to say that every time I've been here, I've had a, a great experience. Um, the people, are lovely. Um, the dancing is is impressive uh, in the sense that you know sometimes people may not expect Indians to you know dance salsa. They people don't expect Australians to dance salsa, um, and yet you know salsa is very strong in in Australia as well. Um, but, you know, so this weekend, for example, I've had a lot of good dancers. Um, I've been impressed by the, the level of my students in my boot camp. So we actually, uh, you know, we've been hosting the championship for Asia Open Championship for quite some time now. So we have a lot of uh, people who are uh, pursuing, uh, competing, and we mm -hmm. also had some people who have uh, traveled to the World Latin Cup, also to the Salsa Summit and competed. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you are a world champion, so you have done it and you are like an expert in that. Mm. I mean, what would you like to tell those people, you know, how is the preparation, what is it, you know, what goes in you, you know, uh, like, you know, how, what, what should one do to get there, you know, so. Well, um, it has to be something inside of you that really drives you. Um, so competing is not something that everybody likes. Um, but, you know, if you're one of those people that really thrives under pressure, then, um, you know, that I think that's an important element, that it has to be something that, that really um, motivates you, you know? And that's what competing does to me. It motivates me to, to get fit and to stay on my toes, you know? When I stop competing, I, I start to become a little bit complacent. So, um, you know, if there's dancers out there that that really find uh, competing uh, mo motivating and they're passionate about it, then that's a, that's a good start, you know, that's a good uh, place to work from. Uh, obviously, you know, you, you, you get out what you put in, so you, you know, put in a lot of hours practicing and getting coaching, it's very important to have a coach, a mentor, uh, even Olympians have coaches, so um, you know it's very hard for people to do it on their own, especially if they haven't had the experience. So if you want to know how to get somewhere, just talk to someone else who's been there, and just follow their footsteps. So um, 
you know, getting, getting the right advice and then working hard. And there's, uh, you know, no reason why people can't achieve their dreams. Usually, how much time do you put in a routine and how much time do you, you know, like, practice? Yeah, well, I mean, I, you know, probably not, I'm not the best example for people to follow in that sense because, uh, you know, I, at the moment, I'm just working solo, so I know myself very well. So, you know, I start preparing for comp competitions maybe three months beforehand. Uh, whereas, you know, I, I wouldn't recommend other people to to leave it so late. I would recommend people to start six months beforehand. Um, but, you know, I tend to, yeah, about three months preparation. Um, it doesn't take me long to choreograph. I choreograph in a few hours. If you wouldn't have been a dancer, what would have you been? I would probably... I would strive to be a famous soccer player. Soccer player? Yeah, wow. soccer player, football, yeah. Wow. yeah because um, they make millions. <laughs> <laughs> so, so did you play, play soccer for any like teams yeah, I, or anything, I, I, any level? I played soccer at school and yeah, yeah. I, I really enjoy soccer. Right. Um, and I think I'd be good at it. Right. Fast feet and oh, yeah? I'm short so I run quick. <laughs> um, I played soccer too when I was young. So, cool. Yeah, but couldn't pursue it further. We'll have a, a, a match. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now that you are here in India and you're like doing this tour, I mean, I mean, would you like to come back to India? <laughs> I would love to come back. Like I said, hopefully I'll come back to your festival. I've heard really good things about how much it's grown and, um, you know, you bring amazing artists to India and uh, it's a privilege to, w to work for your event. So I did it once, I'd love to come back again. And um, maybe like I said, with Luda, that would be a, a nice, uh, I think people would like to see that. Um, but irrelevant, I'd love to be back and uh, do some Indian dancing again, <laughs> like I did in 2012. Yes, of course, you know, we've, uh, like I said to you earlier that, you know, I've, uh, you were one of the very first artists that was in my mind when I was doing my Congress and I was sure that I'm going to bring you and that time, yes, I wanted to bring you with Luda, but I didn't mm. know when I met you, yeah. you said you were, she was busy and yeah. then I got you with Wali. Yeah. So yeah, if there is an opportunity for me to yeah. bring her with you, then I would love to. But more than that, you know, that this weekend, uh, this entire tour, we just started the tour, yeah. has been amazing. And the way you are working with us and you're so cooperative and, you know, that's been amazing. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I feel that Indian people can take a lot from you. And, then I, and it's not going to be over in one trip. It's not going to be possible. Yeah. Maybe we'll have to do some five trips to get at least 10% of your knowledge across to yeah. them. So I'm hoping that this will happen again. And uh, India, look forward to more such things. And that's Oliver Pinara. I'm sure you know a lot more than his just his dancing, his personal life. So uh, that's what is needed to be a world champion. So hopefully we'll see him more and more often to India. Thank you very much. I can assure you one thing that you know you will be proud that India IIDC will grow to be one of the biggest festivals in the world and you'll be awesome. proud that you were the first artist of the first edition yes. of the festival. Awesome. So thank you very much thank you. for your time. Thank you everybody. Hope you enjoyed this video.